These acts and threats of violence are not associated with any one set of partisan or ideological views. But they are permeating so many parts of our national life. Attorney General Merrick Garland saying give him some patience as he continues uh, his prosecutions about January 6th and the Capitol rioters uh, getting pressure from the left. Uh, columnist Jennifer Rubin, who at one time was in the, from the right, uh, what, what Mayor Garland should say about January 6th, patience is wearing thin with Garland, not because he has so far failed to indict Trump or his cronies, his credibility and the credibility of the department are at risk because he has not yet demonstrated the vision and nerve to defend democracy in its hour of need. Now, Glenn Greenwald, Greenwald uh, tweeted this, a full year after the 1-6 riot at the Capitol, the total number of indictments from the Biden DOJ for insurrection, sedition or treason is the same number as Americans indicted by Mueller for criminally conspiring with Russia over the 2016 election. Zero. Back with the panel. Uh, Guy, what about this? Well, January 6th was an outrageous attack on the rule of law, among other things. And I think in response to that attack, there needs to be an adherence to the rule of law. And that sometimes takes a period of time. It's not instant justice, instant gratification the way that some people want. I understand that it's a year later. There have been hundreds of arrests. There also has to be due process for the people who were arrested. They did not lose their rights or were not stripped of their rights just because they behaved terribly and outrageously. And this is the way that the process tends to go. And I think that sometimes you see politicians, and in this case a political figure like the attorney general, trying to sort of quiet some of the critics and say, hey, we're still moving this ball down the field here, bear with me. And in this case, I think that's a relatively prudent and fair thing for him to say. Meantime, Democrats are trying to tie January 6th again and again uh, to voting rights. Take a listen. That is why voting reform and the Freedom to Vote Act is so important to our democracy. January 6th was not an isolated event. It is beyond distasteful for some of our colleagues to ham-fistedly invoke the January 6th anniversary to advance these aims. Their first draft of the legislation at hand was introduced in January of 2019. Byron. Well, the thing they want to do right now is kill the filibuster, and they'll use any argument that is at hand. And uh, two years ago, long before uh, January 6th, they had other arguments to want to get rid of the filibuster. Now they're saying January 6th. On, as far as Merrick Garland is concerned, I said earlier that, that Joe Biden was pleading for time on, on COVID. Well, Garland is pleading for time on uh, on the January 6th investigations because uh, he, he came out today and said, look, just because we've leveled a relatively limited indictment against uh, uh, figure A or figure B, that doesn't mean we're not going to indict them again mm -hmm. with something bigger. Just wait, please, we'll take care of it. He's yeah. under a lot of pressure from, from Democrats. Leslie? Uh, I would agree with uh, both guys on this. You got to be patient. You have over 14,000 hours of videotape. You have 700 people arrested. Approximately half of those are guilty. Approximately half of those have been sentenced already. But you have a lot of people out there. They say approximately 1,000 assaults and could be up to 2,500 people that will be arrested at the end of the day. And also, uh, the attorney general said, quote, actions taken thus far will not be our last. So I believe he will take this as far as it needs to be. And that means perhaps sitting congressional members or even perhaps a former president. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.